The infamous double helix. You see the shape and you know that it represents DNA. But why does DNA look like a twisted ladder? What purpose does it serve? In this video, we're going to unpack DNA and unzip the double helix. When you look at the double helix, you're going to notice that some things look similar and some don't. So let's piece them together. DNA and its cousin RNA are nucleic acids. They provide instructions for your body to build things like proteins. DNA is a double-stranded molecule, which means that it has two sides. These have the same construction, so for now, we're just going to focus on one. Each strand of DNA is made up of nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogenous base. The phosphates make strong bonds with the sugar. This is sometimes referred to as the sugar phosphate backbone. Like an actual backbone, this creates a stable structure for DNA. The sugar is a five carbon molecule called deoxyribose. This is the D in deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. The phosphate binds to the fifth or five prime carbon on the sugar to one side and the third or three prime on the other. When an individual DNA strand grows, it adds phosphates and sugars to the three prime end. This gives the DNA strand directionality as one end is always five prime and the other is always three prime. When two strands join, they come together in opposite directions, such that the five prime end of one strand binds with the three prime end of the other. Think of these sugar and phosphate molecules stacking to create a tower. Since the phosphate binds to the three carbon sugar on one end and the five carbon on the other, we can think of these bricks coming together and at slightly different positions. Since these positions alternate between the two, it creates a twist in the tower. This twist creates a shape that we call the helix. It takes 10 nucleotides to make one complete circle around the helix. Now let's look at the four potential nitrogenous bases, guanine, thymine, adenine, and cytosine. Guanine and adenine have two rings and are known as purines. Cytosine and thymine have one ring and are pyrimidines. These bases can happen in any order, but the order is what creates the code. You can think of this code like an instruction manual. Just like letters on a page can come together in different orders to make different words, your nitrogen spaces can come together and create different codes. As we said before, DNA is made up of two strands, and now we need to look at how those fit together. Remember that DNA looks like a ladder, and right now we're going to be focused on the rungs of the ladder. The rungs of this ladder are where the nitrogenous bases connect. Remember that these are adenine, shown here in red, thymine in yellow, guanine in blue, and cytosine in green. Look at this ladder. Do you see a pattern? Notice how adenine and thymine always go together, and cytosine and guanine always go together? Why do you think this happens? Why does it look this way? Well, remember that some of those nitrogenous bases have two rings and some have one. We want to keep the rungs of the ladder at the same length. This means that we're always going to bind a two ring base with a one ring base. This way, all the rungs of the ladder have the same length. If instead we bonded two two ring molecules, it would be too long. And if we did two one ring molecules, it would be too short. When cytosine and guanine bond together, each of those molecules has three different spaces for binding. And adenine and thymine only have two. Just like it's not fun to be left hanging when you go in for a high five, Well, molecules don't like going unbound. So because of that, we always bond the adenine with the thymine and the guanine with the cytosine. These bonds have another unique feature. They're hydrogen bonds, which are a lot weaker than the bonds between the sugars and the phosphates. This may sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. Because remember that the code in the DNA is in those nitrogenous bases. And to access those nitrogenous bases, we have to be able to unzip the DNA. 
If those bonds were strong, the DNA wouldn't be able to come apart. And if it can't come apart, it can't be read. And that means it can't be used. Putting your body together, as you might imagine, takes a lot of instructions. If we took all the DNA out of your cells and stretched it out, it would stretch more than two meters. That's taller than a door in your house. And we can't just crumple the DNA up and jam it in the cell because that would wreck the structure of the DNA. Instead, the DNA is coiled around proteins called histones, and it continues to be coiled and condensed, creating what's called chromatin. That chromatin coils and condenses further, creating chromosomes. Remember when I said that the DNA had to be unzipped to be read? Do you think this can be unzipped? No. This supercoiled DNA has to actually uncoil in order to be accessed so that the genes inside can be expressed. And that's one way that your body regulates gene expression. It regulates how tightly coiled the DNA is. Wow, that was a lot of information. Let's do a quick recap. DNA is a double-stranded nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are constructed of nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. The sugars and phosphates bind together strongly to create a strong backbone structure for the DNA. The phosphates bind to different carbons on the sugar, and that results in the twist in the DNA that we call the helix. The nitrogenous bases contain the code for the DNA, and they typically bond in a specific way, adenine with thymine, guanine with cytosine. DNA strands are super long, and in order to fit in your cells, they need to be coiled and super coiled into chromatin and then chromosomes. So now you know why DNA is shaped like a twisted ladder. Next time, we're going to delve into how that DNA is used by your cells.